Hi, welcome to Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market Podcast. This is a show all about farmer's markets. Whether you're a farmer's market manager, a farmer, or a food producer selling at farmer's markets, or just an awesome farmer's market shopper, this is the podcast for you. On today's episode, we're chatting with Tiffany and Terrence Cook, who you may know by their Instagram handle, Cooks in the Kitchen. Tiffany and Terrence are dedicated meal planners and devoted farmer's market shoppers. In our interview, Tiffany and Terrence tell us about making friends with farmer's market vendors and farmers, their weekly meal planning process, and how they capture their delicious creations in photos. Hi, I'm one of your hosts, Bridget Myers. I've spent years as an on-site farmer's market manager, and I've done it all from pulling permits to social media marketing. And I'm another one of your hosts, Justine marzoni Mead hot sauce maker, farmer's market vendor, and event facilitator for the Intense Conference. And I'm Kat Fields-White, director of San Diego Markets, still popping tents at Farmer's Markets Weekly, and founder of Intense Business. Welcome back to Tent Talk. This week we have the pleasure of speaking with some farmer's market pros from the other side of the tent. That's right, farmer's market shoppers. Tiffany and Terrence Cook are the culinary whiz kids behind the Instagram handle at Cooks in the Kitchen. Each week, they develop a creative nightly dinner menu of nutritious and hearty meals. And what's even more impressive is that they actually stick to it. Over the last year or so, Tiffany and Terrence have made great friends with their local farmer's market vendors and helped some of their favorite food makers develop recipes and social media content. All right, so guys, can you tell us a little bit about how you started at Cooks in the Kitchen on Instagram, and have you always cooked together? How did that come about? The (laughs) Instagram actually started because I needed to know what we enjoyed eating. So I would always say to Tiffany, I can't, what was that thing that we made five weeks ago, or a month ago, whatever it was, and I said we needed to start cataloging meals that we enjoyed, so she would take pictures every now and then, and then it just morphed into starting an Instagram page. And it was really about just so that we could remember what we enjoyed eating so that we knew to make that again when we couldn't figure out. That makes so much sense. That does make so much yeah. sense. I make things and Jerome would be like, make that thing that you made that was like, and he'll give me one hint. I have no idea what he's talking about. I'm sure I've made it up as I went along. Yeah. No idea. Mm-hmm. So clever. Yeah. So I might, own my dad would catalog. be like, yeah. what do you want for dinner? And we'd be like, oh, whatever. And he'd be like, well, I don't know how to cook that. <laughs> We need a picture catalog. Yeah. I feel like I take pictures of stuff, but it's not like beautiful pictures. Like I would never start an Instagram page with the pictures I take of like the pot pie that I make. But that's good. Like if the pictures are nice. Yeah, why and not? It, well, we have amazing natural light in yeah. our house. So it has a lot to do with this. Yeah. We've actually been thinking about it. We started this in February last year. So we haven't yet gone through the the Instagram page with daylight savings or oh. whatever the opposite is. So yeah, we're yeah. wondering what's going to happen when it's 4.30 and it's dark. How are we going to get those pictures that everyone's like, wow, how do you get it to look like that? And Cooking dinner at noon, I think, <laughs> is the thing. <laughs> how do you get it to look like that, though? Are you using... A, I'm just uh, using my iPhone 7. I was going to say, are you using an iPhone oh, or are yeah. you using a, and then, a big camera? Um, no, nope, just my iPhone. And then I use also a photo editing mm-hmm. um, app called Snapseed, which really mm-hmm. helps brighten up the food sometimes if we need to brighten it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then we also, w- once we started it, we were thinking that... We had a unique angle because Terrence does all the menu planning and shopping, and then I do the execution of the food. Oh, interesting. Oh, that nice. is unique, too, mm-hmm. yeah. And Tiffany was, a lot of people nowadays are always on social media, and Tiffany had her Instagram page. I wasn't on Instagram. Yeah. I was on Facebook, but normally I would just antagonize people. So I, like, <laughs> I got to get off Facebook. This is awful. I haven't been on since we started this, which is my life has gotten so much happier. It's amazing. <laughs> So I was like, why don't we just start a page so that we have something to share mm-hmm. and work on together? Because we're both pretty artistic people. Yeah. So it was a nice outlet. Such a great outlet. Yeah, yeah, we're having fun with awesome. it. Very fun. Do you so, have day jobs? Um, Terrence does. I stay home with our, our girls who uh-huh. are two and a half and four. Cool. Yeah. Well, what do you do, Busy. Terrence? I work for Amen Healthcare in Del Mar. Mm-hmm. Healthcare staffing. So not a big artistic... Yeah, oh no! Design. So you need this outlet. Oh my gosh, do I? <laughs> yes, please. 
<laughs> well, that's good. That's serving that purpose. So when did you guys start shopping at the farmer's market? So you say you do the shopping, Terrence, yeah. but I mean. Well, we lived in Chicago, and mm-hmm. that's where we met. And we started going to the Green City Market oh, in uh-huh. the park, which was amazing. Yeah. But we all know about Chicago winters, so it's not <laughs> year-round. And when we moved to Little Italy, we were so excited to find out that there was a farmer farmer's market right at our door yeah. that was open every Saturday all year. All so year. it was really right. exciting. <laughs> so we uh, we were we just loved it. Yeah, we yeah. moved from Chicago to the corner of Beach and Columbia. Oh, oh okay. you were like so right there. So close. Yeah. It was a block away when it used to be um, yeah, Columbia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think my first experience of a farmer's market was in Madison, Wisconsin, when oh. I was in school, they had the, the Capitol Square. And that's another great farmer's market. I just went there this Beautiful summer. Beautiful. One of the oldest oh, ones. Oh, yeah. 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 It's yeah. really nice. That's yeah. one of the oldest farmer's markets in America. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, really? Uh-huh. Yeah. There you go. So that mm-hmm. was, I mean, growing up in New Jersey, I had absolutely no idea what a farmer's market <laughs> was. Uh, and Garden State, I mean, a lot of farms, but yeah. was not aware of farmer's markets. Yeah, so that must have been a nice kind of change to come out and have that access, like, year-round. So you guys shop, you know all the time at the market or can you talk a little bit about like what you do like do you have a game plan when you get to the market and how do you kind of execute your shopping there it comes down to the menu planning Mm -hmm. if I get it done I'll try to get some things planned out before we go to the farmer so I know what I'm picking up if it has to be meal specific yeah Uh, otherwise there's a lot of those key essentials that it doesn't matter if we're making a specific meal that week it's just we need to have it yeah uh, so for instance like the the cd wheat i, I gotta have cd wheat from the <laughs> yeah. Hollywood homestead oh, God, i mean so it just good. it sets okay. the I, I go through weeks where if we don't go to the farmers and i don't have a loaf during the week i just feel depressed at breakfast time <laughs> yeah. i'm like eating someone else's bread i'm like oh, this would be so much better <laughs> With that uh, loaf of CD I've market. had that. I feel like a lot of farmers market shoppers feel that way. Like if you are out of town and you miss a market or something, you have mm-hmm. to get some kind of substitute from somewhere else, or you don't have that item that you have all the time. It's like if I have to get like grocery store hummus, I'm so depressed. Like <laughs> yeah. I get it because I need that kind of flavor, but it's like, oh, I wish I could be eating my like majestic garlic. You know, it's sad. <laughs> so <laughs> it's good you guys are consistent about it. Then you're consistent shoppers. But yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, and it, it gets you addicted to certain way of eating the yeah. baby Clydesdale, the sriracha. I can't eat eggs anymore without it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's I, right, I, everybody. I, that's right. I, I, you, heard it, you heard it here Once first. you go baby Clydesdale, <laughs> you don't go back. Like that's it's, right. It's true. It's so it's, true. It, it really is true. I And sometimes, I'm a weirdo, I put barbecue sauce on my mac and cheese. Ooh, and I yeah. won't eat that mac. That sounds good. Because of the smokiness, <laughs> right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. A lot of people freak out. And they're like, that's crazy. And I'm like, no. I never thought of that. Like, they always, the Texas barbecue burger or whatever, that's always <laughs> cheddar and barbecue sauce. That's it's right. a great combination. So I, I literally don't eat uh, macaroni and cheese if I know I can't have barbecue sauce with it. Yeah. So that starts to happen with uh, certain foods. So eggs, I just, I can't eat my eggs now without the sriracha. Yeah. So... Get that flavor combination, that craving. That's actually what makes a good food product is something in your flavor combination that creates a craving that people just can't yeah. get any other way. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's how I feel about all the stuff I get at the market that it's like, I eat the sriracha on mac and cheese. Like when you have kids, I feel like you're just eating mac and cheese all the time. So it's like, <laughs> what are you going to put on it? So it's like more of an to adult. To elevate it. And yeah. it's, all, it's a mature mac and cheese. <laughs> so put sriracha on it. It's just, then I feel like a grown up. Yeah. 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 Do you still put spinach in your mac and cheese? Yes, I put it in mine with my oh, kids. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. my kids. I've like heard of peas. I mix broccoli. Oh, peas. With yeah. Broccoli. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I can do cauliflower. My kids don't notice because mm-hmm. it's white, Smart. so I can like mix it in. Yeah. They don't see it. My kids don't like any like specks in their mac and cheese. It's so <laughs> annoying. They'll pick it out. So I put onions in cauliflower because they can't really see it. Yeah, that's smart. But yeah. yeah, it's kind of messed up if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Messed up. It's okay. They don't. They're not listening to this podcast. <laughs> Actually, the reason I like to do the food shopping is because when I grew up in Jersey with my single mother, obviously with a single mom, you're attached to her hip mm-hmm. um, because there's no one else to watch you. Yeah. <laughs> so I I loved going food shopping with my mother. I mean, I vividly have memories from childhood all through high school. Oh, wow. Uh, we would go to Grand Union, and then it was Treasure Island in Wayne, New Jersey. And <laughs> my mom was very systematic about it. She knew every single aisle, so her shopping list 
was based on the aisles. So it wasn't like she had to go through and look at the, every time she knew she was knocking things off one after the other. So if you look at my shop, unless it's just pretty much Same exactly. way you know yeah. where the like vendors are at the market. I know, so I know the, the vendors, and then mm -hmm. if I go to a grocery store, I know everything by the aisles, and that's how my list is planned. Mm -hmm. So I figure if Tiff's gonna do all the cooking, I've gotta play my part, so. Yeah, it, it, makes, like my, it makes my life a lot easier because Definitely. instead <clears throat> of opening the refrigerator on Monday afternoon and saying, what am I gonna make for dinner? I already know what I'm gonna be making. Yeah, yeah. And it's all there for me, and ready to go so it as you know a mom of two young kids it makes it a lot easier for me sure. it makes such a mm -hmm. that's a good division of labor yeah. and, and I think that's the reason why a lot of our friends who follow the page and live in the neighborhood you can tell that there's a real disconnect between like every single day what they're going to do mm -hmm. like if you're going into Wednesday night and you haven't gone to the store, or yeah. it's Wednesday <laughs> afternoon, mm -hmm. and you still don't know what you're eating for dinner, mm -hmm. you're not going to have probably a very nice dinner, Complete or get healthy. that opportunity to take that picture and put it on Instagram, uh -huh. because you're probably <laughs> microwaving something. So yeah. menu planning, that's another thing that we're, though we're not trying to change the world to Instagram page, we don't have any strategy, it's just <laughs> fun for us right now. Yeah. Our thoughts in it would be, to somehow revolutionize that to get people to think more about like from Sunday start thinking about what you're gonna eat the entire week get all those ingredients and then once they're in your fridge you're committed to it right yeah yeah exactly so if yeah. you if you plan something for Thursday night and it's on Sunday and you haven't shopped and then it's Thursday you're probably not going to make whatever right. so it's kind you're of a grab something fast or you have to something. you have to do both yeah that's good yeah. so I mean you can change people's eating habits that way yeah. absolutely yeah. We're all healthier and yeah. we bounce ideas off of each other. He does most of the menu planning, but we'll sit there together and think of what we want for the week. And sometimes he comes up with crazy ideas that I veto. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to make chicken noodle soup tonight. And he said, what about chicken noodle soup with ground chicken? And I said, no. <laughs> no. That's right. That's but right. then there's things like BLT you tacos. Take ground chicken and roll it into chicken meatballs yeah. and that would make yeah. a good like yeah, a wedding true. soup. <laughs> right? Compromise. That's what I was going for. <laughs> Where, were <laughs> Where were you, Kat? Where were you, Kat, when I brought this up? I wasn't just going to throw ground chicken in there. <laughs> you you need to interpret it. Just toss it in. Yeah. So then he came up with BLT tacos and they oh, were fantastic. Yeah. Wow. So that sounds good, actually. It's fun to that was try actually, things that are new. I read that in the New York Times, but... You know, that's what happens. You have to you find, yeah. you know, yeah. where, where these mm -hmm. recipes, you got to get inspiration. Yeah. yeah. And when you are creating uh, your weekly menu, now that you've been spending a lot of time at the farmer's markets, mm -hmm. are you starting to get inspired by what's in season or what you're seeing different farmers growing? Does that play into your meal planning at all? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah like we ate so much corn this summer because <laughs> yeah. it was delicious and why wouldn't you? And um, I think we really do enjoy cooking seasonally and teaching our girls what is available to us, you know, throughout the year. And it's fun to try, try new things. We've, we've had this discussion several times. <laughs> We're notorious procrastinators. Uh, we totally could have changed the world by now. Half of our ideas, one of our ideas, <laughs> totally would have changed the world. But one, one of the things that always, we would always talk about is, I wish there was somewhere where I could just look up what's in season when yeah mm -hmm. right and then there these things probably exist but so it's uh september right going into october just what's in season i don't know what is truly because again you can get a tomato any time of year right because yeah. they import it from different right? parts of the world yeah. you can get a strawberry any stored. time of the year but yeah. most people know like i think it's june and july or the strawberry months not or, in california not in california, not in california. So, carlsbad oceanside january and february are two of the strongest harvest wow. months for strawberries which mm -hmm. took me years to get used to because in more most parts of the country summer is strawberry yeah, right. season mm -hmm. but because of the way the breezes work here a lot of our strawberry growers are up right off the ocean and they get a huge crop in the middle of winter there it freaks people out yeah. <laughs> they don't know where they're they coming plant from in November. Here, yeah. and the, the seasonal calendar thing this is sort of interesting uh, the farm bureau typically does publish a seasonal calendar but they haven't updated it lately and because of all the climate change in the last mm -hmm. four or five years mm -hmm. and then also farmers using hoop houses um, 
that information isn't actually accurate anymore. Mm. So we're seeing farmers now are overrun with watermelons. It's almost October. It's crazy. Yeah. They That's came really in much common. later, mm-hmm. and they're, it's still really warm. And so there were a lot of watermelons at the market yesterday. Mm-hmm. Wacko, That's you'd never yeah. find that on a calendar. <laughs> the last year, Masael had all these pumpkins, like yeah. this time of year, and it right. was you know well, really early, early for him. And he was he said, yeah, it's just a hot summer, so they grew faster and earlier. So and what's cool predict. is that if you go to the farmer's market, you don't need. That's an true. That's right. You just look at the and see it. That's true. If it's That's a California true. certified farmer's market, you're like, okay, this is what people this are growing. This is what growing. people are growing right yeah. now. And, and sometimes was, that changes yeah. our menu. If we see a beautiful eggplant, we say, well, what can we do with this? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Improvise. That goes back to your question of the inspiration or what we think when we're heading to a farmer's market. A lot of it is just walking around yeah. and seeing what's out there. And then you see a, one of the vendors, those beautiful eggplants, like Tiffany said, and... Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember we, I think a few weeks ago we went to the market and I was like, man, I remember a year ago we made fried green tomatoes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we we're walking around, we saw all the green tomatoes. Like, perfect. That's <laughs> yeah. so funny that yeah. this is when they're out. So we got some of the green tomatoes, we got some of the nut crumbs, and oh, holy yeah. moly. So good, yeah. right? So good. Outrageous how good they were. And a couple weeks early, we had done the eggplant with the nut crumbs. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So That's it a great was product. Yes. delicious. Mm-hmm. We just bought their pumpkin spice. Oh, yeah, that's a new one. They just gave me a sample Pumpkin spice nut crumb? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, so nice. I actually made so pumpkin good. bread with it oh. yesterday, and I meant to bring you some. Interesting. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I sprinkled that. it on top. Yeah. yeah. We made this delicious bread for you. <laughs> <laughs> that we left That we forgot. It's a thought that counts. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's the bread that counts. the bread. You can't eat it because you have nut allergies. Yeah, she's got you the nut allergies. So. Yeah. so many things in the market I can't have. Bits and sauce, nut crumbs. Yeah, you're talking about tacos. Uh, I avoid wheat more or less. Um, good wheat I'll eat. I have to know where it's coming from. CD wheat is fine because I know where those guys get their flour. Uh, but we just got a sample. We've got a new vendor starting that's doing a vegan cheese. But they also have, they make tortillas that are sorghum and cassava flour. Okay. So Whoa. totally gluten free, but they've got perfect soft tortilla texture. Wow. Really good with no corn. Wow. No wheat. Yeah, huh. it's cool. So is there something that you would advise that farmers market farmers and vendors could do to maintain a shopper's interest or loyalty? I was thinking about this and I think a lot of people go to farmers markets because it's a scene. Uh, Mm -hmm. But like we were just talking, I go, a lot of people go with uh, something in mind that they want to get or some people, uh, like I was saying, may be inspired by what they see. Other people, I think it's just a scene. And they don't really know right. mm-hmm. what to do. And even to that point, even deeper than that, they don't have a menu plan. They don't know when they're going to go food shopping that week. They don't know what they're cooking, whatever. So uh, I think some people are intimidated by cooking. Sure. Yeah, uh, It's something that I mean, Tiffany always wasn't a great chef, wasn't always a great <laughs> You know, photography. <laughs> I'm talking about when she was like two years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can talk about that later. <laughs> Make sure to edit that one out. But I think if people were had more inspiration or at, at the very least guidance mm-hmm. about what to do, like mm. you can look at corn and be like, wow, corn, I love corn, yeah. but they won't buy it because what am I going to do with it? I don't know okay, I'll buy corn, so what do I do? Just eat corn? What do I eat with it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was actually thinking, you could totally steal this, but what a great idea this would be. How, how this would revolutionize <laughs> farmer's markets. should have weekly scavenger hunts. Yeah. Offer up a recipe, like let's just say corn chowder, and I bet you can get every single ingredient well, yeah, at the farmer's sure. market from the yeah. salt yeah. to the pepper, like Coronado spices or the mm-hmm. salt farm, the, the corn, if you want to put peppers or chicken in it, and just they have to go around to each of the vendors and find these things. And so that could be a way because, again, some people may just be making macaroni and cheese all the time yeah. or mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. just steak and potatoes. But given them an actual recipe, they could come to the, the main booth That's and right. grab it and then go around and 
grab all these Put things. Put an or... email newsletter. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah, a, that's, that's a really good idea. idea. Yeah. We're stealing that idea. Too. Yeah, we're <laughs> stealing that idea. <laughs> that is now our idea. You don't have time for that. You're busy shopping and <laughs> doing your Instagram. We're take Absolutely. We'll take this one out. Absolutely. We have done kids scavenger hunts. Yeah, where they, they find, find like something green. Yeah, like, like a bingo card and yeah. stuff and they have to find Talk different to vegetables. Farmer. This will be like yeah. the adult coloring book. Yeah. Yes. 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 It's kind of like that because you're all a community at the farmer's market so you can go to Maybe it's something like you have more partnerships where the, um, and I can never remember the woman's name and she doesn't have, it's not like the farm is labeled, but she always has the huge amount of corn and the mushrooms. Oh, Colano oh, Farms. 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 Yeah, okay. Leach, Leach at the market. And, and, and that's where we get uh, the green tomatoes from. So, yeah. you know, if, if it's something where she could have a sign up or it's something sponsored by the market that, okay, get the green tomatoes and then all the way down the street, go get the nut crumbs. crumbs. Yeah. She the- actually, Kawano has been famous for, and unfortunately we've just changed the format of the market so they, they don't face each other anymore. They're back to back. But she and Salt Farm had a great deal going for years and years where she would always use Salt Farm on her samples. Mm. She'd cut up with little tomatoes. pieces of tomatoes and mm-hmm. had toothpicks and had Salt Farm on it. And then Salt Farm would do the same thing across the aisle from her. She'd use her right. tomatoes to sample their salts. Yeah. yeah. So nice. Really smart to do cooperative marketing mm-hmm. between the vendors. Absolutely. And then you have like a snack idea. You know, yeah. it's like right there, just really easy for people. Right. They don't have ideas. So yeah, but so recipe cards and recipe postings on their booths and things, mm-hmm. that would be a great idea. Yeah. Do your girls help you cook at all in the kitchen? They do. I mean, they're, um, I mean, they're still pretty young, yeah. but they love helping me make pizza. We make pizza mm-hmm. every Friday night, so they roll out the dough, and we make tortillas, and they help with that. Anything that they can get their hands in. Um, baking is a big thing that they like to do, too. Yeah. So I think as they get older, they'll be able to contribute more, but yeah. just being in the kitchen and being happy to be there with me makes me happy yeah, yeah. and you're totally molding how they're going to approach exactly. food exactly have you ever tri- been on the road traveling or something and tried to slip them a costco tomato and see their reaction <laughs> um, i don't think their yeah, palates yeah. are that <laughs> well defined i mean they're they're four and two yeah, well, it's maybe a little bit older. So how, old, though. how old was Marley when he... Uh, we, he was probably like six. Yeah, so yeah. He, he was given an apple that came from somewhere, Costco like, or, yeah, some, or something. Yeah, Vaughn or something. And he, <laughs> he, he bit it and he said, what is this? Okay. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, it doesn't taste like... It. He like had the most like sophisticated reaction. He's like, it doesn't taste like anything. It's very bland and it's very shiny. He goes, what's on it? He's trying to scrape the wax <laughs> off and he's like, there's a sticker on it. Like, it was so like innocent because he was so young, but I was like, wow, he's just really tuned in to like <laughs> our house. Awesome. We yeah, don't have he's to He's been raised in farmer's markets. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's funny. I do have to say they yeah. post their daughter's lunches on their stories <laughs> and they're like, that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a little dinosaur like cut out sandwich. Oh, I'm like, yeah. oh, that's yeah. 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 yeah, those yeah, moms is like shaming, <laughs> shaming <laughs> the other moms. I know. Throw, like, <laughs> I'm not trying to shame anyone. Yeah, I'm just I'm trying to. No, I know. Come up with uh, and everyone, I had a lot of messages saying, please post more lunches so yeah. we can get ideas. Yeah, people yeah, love so. that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you talk about menu planning, people that are planning lunches for young children and then for mm-hmm. teenagers who have their own set of pickiness uh-huh. uh, really get stumped. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's really hard for people. So the whole menu yeah. planning for kids is Which great. Yeah. probably then leads to anxiety right. and stress. Yeah. Right. And, uh-huh. oh my gosh, my kid's going to open up their lunch pail at school and everyone's going to be like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> right, or, that too. Uh, I well, her teacher already commented. She yeah. said, what? You, your lunches are amazing. <laughs> Thank good. you. Are right, you your kids picky? <laughs> They're picky. I mean, they have their moments. It's mm-hmm. kind of hit or miss. Um, for dinners, I tend to dumb down what we're eating, mm-hmm. and some nights they'll eat it, some nights they won't. Not so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have a photographer yeah. friend who does incredibly creative lunches and dinners mm-hmm. and dairy. Yeah. And what she call her a three nager? She says yeah. she just won't eat anything. Yeah. <laughs> she and she'll report like what the lunchbox came home with. Like, she'll take a picture <laughs> of it and be like, "This is what came home. It's everything. Like <laughs> except for like one pea the or grape. something." Yeah. She, she ate the grape. whole same lunch yeah. last week. Like she ate the whole thing. So that's yeah. just how. Kids Where are, do you so. guys get your recipes, or do you come up? Are they all things that you came up with, or do you you know kind of cruise through? Uh, recipe books and kind of make your alterations? We actually have a ton of recipe books in our kitchen. Um, and we have, our menu is typically, uh, and this is something that is very helpful for people at home uh, <laughs> when it comes to menu planning. We have a few set days of the week. So Monday, I actually termed it Sal Monday. 
So we always oh, had salmon, salmon. salmon. Oh. on Monday. <laughs> Monday, that's right. And so salmon is very healthy for you. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a great piece of fish. So we always know that a meal is going to be based around salmon. So that's pretty much half the battle when you have your protein mm-hmm. figured uh-huh, out. Yeah. Tuesday is Taco Tuesday, but it's really anything Mexican themed. Uh, Wednesday, don't really have one. And that's sometimes the hardest one to figure out. <laughs> yeah. Thursday. Don't really have one, so it's kind of struggling. We know we're going to do some kind of salad or a bowl, whatever it may be, with a grain. And Friday's pizza. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, we always make homemade pizza. And then Sunday's typically super salad or whatever, maybe fall. When it's fall, we're going to do a chili or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, that always helps. But when it comes to coming up with other ideas, we get inspired by other people's pics on Instagram. Uh, I love New York Times cooking. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just to, you can just type in, like sometimes uh, I typed in, I can't remember if it was, uh, it may have been eggplant. And so then we were trying to figure out, oh, this is what you know would be great with eggplant because we have a, I just saw a beautiful eggplant at the farmers and bought it yeah. and we had already done Parmesan. I was like, well, what are we going to do with this one? Yeah. And uh, so that helps. And then just looking back in our old Instagram pics, uh, just to say, oh, I remember that was a great meal. I love mm-hmm. that. So Let's if you're trying to decide again. between two preparation methods, do you think about which one will photograph better? <laughs> I don't think <laughs> Now does. that you're going <laughs> on to <I> Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> the picture, the photo taking. Yeah, yeah. So does the Instagramming process inform your menu planning at this mm. point? It, I, I mean, <laughs> I don't think it has that much, but... <laughs> Certainly, there are some things that we're making. It's like, how are you going to make this a good picture? Right? <laughs> yeah. Of course, sometimes it's, uh, you know, we have salmon every um, Monday. And yeah. one of our favorite dishes is just a nice piece of salmon with Mediterranean couscous and rainbow carrots. Uh-huh. And there's yeah. only so many times that you could photograph something right. and make it look new or interesting. Yeah, yeah so, our comfort food here is... I mean, when everybody's really stressed out, it's like, can we just have a bowl of rice and broccoli and salmon? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. Right? So it's, how many, how many photos of that can you possibly right. take? So sometimes, you know, Tiffany does a great job of putting these together and propping them so it makes for a good picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then sometimes I'll just be at work and I'll text her to just, uh, how about try it this way? Or let's just take a picture of the carrots or yeah. whatever it may be. But most of the time I come home, the pictures may be already taken. If it's not, I'll try to play with something. No, 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 no. Or sometimes she'll do something like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. You work. stick to your menu planning. I'm taking yeah. pictures here. But it's, to the considering shop. how much we have to figure out from the menu planning to getting the ingredients to taking the picture and everything, we actually, we, we've been doing this for seven months now. Mm-hmm. We're actually very collaborative, and yeah. it doesn't, you would think after a while, I'd be like, oh, like, no, this or that, but... Very rarely does it turn into a, it's not what I would have done. Or, yeah. Yeah. So a fun, creative outlet. Yeah. yeah. So how do you feel about people sharing your photos? So like if a mm-hmm. farmer comes back and snaps a screenshot of something that you've, you know, something from your Instagram account where mm-hmm. it has green tomatoes. I mean, how do you feel about the farmer that grows the tomatoes picking up that photo? Oh, I think it? that's great because you know, as long we're as tagging they, like, them. Yeah, as long as they it, give you credit and, yeah, and mention your name absolutely, and things. Absolutely, because yeah. we want other people to see what we're doing with the product. Yeah, that's well. great. So yeah. that's a terrific relationship between uh-huh. bloggers, Instagrammers, and farmers and food makers. You know, if you don't mind them picking up your images and sharing them and giving you credit... A lot of farmers and food makers don't necessarily have those photo skills yeah. or, yeah. or the time. Well, it's actually much not. for us because, yeah. you know, running a small business, there's already so many things you have to do. And then on top of that, now it's like we live in the social media world where we have to yeah. have like a strong online presence. And it's hard to then also be a good food photographer. Right. And, yeah. You know, just adding that to the list. So when we found... Uh, Tiffany and Terrence were like, yes! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's losing our stuff. That yeah. looks good. Well, do you do cl- classic photo styling things? I mean, do you use whipped cream to look like butter and things because it no. holds up better? No, and because all those photo styling tricks. Yeah, mashed potatoes with the whipped cream. No, because yeah. what we're doing is I'm making it, I'm taking a picture, and then, and then you're eating, eating it. it. Yeah. You're yeah. not yeah. trying to mess around. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. that's probably the biggest point of frustration in this whole uh, operation is when she's taking a photo and I'm starving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he loses like, his It's patience. fine. It's I'm fine. Like, just let's wait eat. a minute. I'll be done in a second. Yeah. See, can I play mine, please? Can I just eat already? Yeah, we also have disasters. You know, the girls will be 
trying to touch the food when I'm taking the picture. Yeah. That once uh, one of the girls knocked over the plate and the dog <laughs> ate the food. <laughs> oh, and no. My picture no. was just a disaster. Yeah. You know, we've got. We should see some outtakes though. I right? know. Yeah. 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 I posted yeah. those on the stories. Yeah. 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 Just to I see think that. I saw something charred so not too long ago. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The salmon. Oh, it was yeah. the salmon. Yeah, yeah. with salmon briquettes. Oh. Yeah. Some ladies in the neighborhood asked me to uh, teach them how to make. A simple dish, and I used someone's barbecue that I did not <laughs> know it was as powerful like as it we was. You were professional. Yeah, the salmon yeah. was was uh, crispy. Crispy. <laughs> <laughs> it was really embarrassing. But she took a picture. It was great. Right. Yeah. yeah, but I showed it. And I yeah. showed the real life. For other people that yeah. say, hey, you know what? Not everything comes out. I, I tell her that all the time when it, if a picture doesn't go right or if a meal doesn't go right, and we. It was funny because we're always, you know, in a social media world, it's, oh, we only have 70 likes right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's been up for a day or whatever. <laughs> and there was one time we made a meal and we didn't really like it. And she was like, should I post it? And I said, of course you should post it and just say that we actually didn't really like it. Yeah. And yeah. that's that. I mean, we are normal people. We're not, if you're running a restaurant, you're probably not yeah. going to do that because you don't yeah. want to be the place that's like, yeah, we don't like our food. <laughs> But I mean, but we're just, your house. So we're just okay. normal Dude. people yeah. who don't have any culinary background or any schooling, and mm-hmm. we're just making... I think that's an yeah. encouraging thing for people to know that even though you make a lot of beautiful things, every once in a while something goes yeah. wrong, and so yeah. you know, they can feel a little less hard on themselves that way. Yeah, yeah And totally. that's what's fun about cooking is it's like experimenting. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I feel like you could just print out your Instagram, and it would be a cookbook. Like, ready oh, to go. Like, because your recipes are on the there. Portland... Yeah, State, or Portland Farmers Market has cookbook. a cookbook. We oh, should make gorgeous. A, a cookbook. Yeah. yeah. Should absolutely. Yeah. And you guys, you don't have a cookbook. <laughs> you don't have We've a. We've been through this a few times. Yes. I've had every We've... time I hire a new person, they say we should do a cookbook, and then they get into it, and you look at the expense and everything, and it's. We so would totally, we would totally work with you, would you? on All something right. like that because Sign this contract. that would be <laughs> that would be a part of, and it's not about. I actually the... just found a new printer that makes it make much more sense. Because I, I, I using love these guys two years that. Ago. I mean, I'm I'm a very creative person in healthcare staffing. And I love doing stuff like this. I made a book for our fourth anniversary uh, that's called, uh, what is it, uh, Four Years of Foodie? Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, and it's just about all the, some of the meals that she's made, but mostly about the restaurants that we've been to. Oh, cool. And we always just that's love cute. taking pictures nice. of stuff. And it's yeah. about, I made it on uh, Shutterfly, and it's probably 40 mm-hmm. pages long. And, I mean, I worked for weeks on it. I actually had one ordered and called them and told them to cancel the delivery because I saw a typo. I spelled macaroons wrong. Wow. That's easy to do. Yeah, so I put two O's in it, uh-huh. as in the, the Jewish uh, Like cookie. the coconut one. Yeah. yeah. Versus the French one. And uh, mm-hmm. so, yeah. <laughs> so it's gotta be and that, We that, may have a project here. That yeah. can kind of play into the scavenger thing. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. Seasonal. That's what I was thinking when you talked about the scavenger. Yeah, yeah. So that you could do it as a booklet like we do for the yeah. conference. And uh, yeah. you have different things in there. And then if you complete your whole book, you get a prize. You know? And Sarah Marshall, <laughs> who was on here, was a speaker at the Intense Conference, and she, we just did a podcast mm-hmm. with her. She has a cookbook that she did. She said one and done on the cookbook. But she said <laughs> one of the hardest things to do was the photographs, sure. of the food yeah. photographs. Yeah. So you guys already yeah. have that. Yeah, you're ahead I mean, there. you already have like a stockpile of those. So yeah. I feel like they're already a kind of step ahead on that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. Yeah, recording another. We got another. Oh, yeah, we're recording <laughs> this. We need more to do. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We just really need another to project. Start more yeah. projects. I know that Justine wants me to start another project. <laughs> How about in uh, March? In March, March maybe after, after the conference. conference. Right? There we go. All, All right. right. So okay. we plow you through our questions the, and more. Yeah. Do the question of the week. Let's yeah. do it. Okay. So our question of the week this week is: What's the one thing you refuse to ever buy in a grocery store and only buy at farmers markets? So we can kind of start with you guys, and then we'll flip around here. So. I would say right now, I mean, there's a, a few things. One, and again, it's not just because you're here. <laughs> yes. You're getting so but, much good PR I mean, here. I can't, I, I never liked sriracha in the first place, <laughs> but I couldn't put sriracha on my food now if it wasn't uh, the baby Clydesdale. Mm-hmm. There we go. Uh, mm-hmm. Sriracha. I mean, it is legitimately, and it's almost better. It's such a great uh, savory, and it's got a little sweetness in it, but on mm-hmm. hummus... Forget about mm-hmm. it. It is so good on hummus. But another thing that we really only buy at farmer's markets is dog food. 
Oh, interesting. Oh, oh. All right. Mm-hmm. And I and it goes more to the question like I hate having to buy because I feel bad for them because it's yeah. changing it up on them. And sometimes you can see it in dogs with their stomachs if you're giving them something right. for so long. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, dog food. Interesting. Cool. Such well, a good bonus good. at the market. I feel yeah. like just have those extra right. things for all your family members. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Does he? Is he gonna get his own Instagram handle though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he. If he did, I mean, this is the most lovable. I mean, he looks like a little teddy bear. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so we actually have been talking about that. Like, why do we not have copper in more pits? Because <laughs> copper in the kitchen. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. He would. Uh, That'd be a good cookbook. Yeah. <laughs> he would get a lot of followers. A lot more that's followers right. than we have. Oh man, dog Instagram is already like <laughs> blowing up right now. <laughs> to get a dog, I guess. <laughs> Tiffany, what's your something that you get at the farmers market that you can't get anywhere else? I think. I'm with Terrence on mm-hmm. that, the dog food and definitely the sriracha. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and balsamic. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh balsamic. Yeah. yeah. Where do you, you guys get your balsamic? California. All oh, yeah. 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 That's the best. <laughs> yeah. Bridget gets that by the gallon. I get, yeah. They, she gave me a half gallon and it just like, it was awesome because I was mm-hmm. constantly running out. So, yeah, I use it all the time. Yeah. It's nice and thick at the viscosity yeah. of it. If you buy normal, not normal, but balsamic vinegar in a grocery store, mm-hmm. it's going to be... Uh, Less viscous. Yeah, it's so thin. I get the white balsamic oh, from her. Ooh. I love it. And yeah, I put so. baby Clydesdale sriracha. <laughs> this episode is baby Clydesdale smell that hot sauce. She's paying us all. Yeah, you, you, you have to. You have to do it. It goes to a point early that you were bringing up, Kat, about is it okay for people to have pictures or repost pictures? One of the things my mom and I always joked about is anytime we liked something. We were like, oh no, it's only a matter of months before it's no longer on the shelf. <laughs> right. And so I need people to know about baby right. guys though. Buy it. I always say to Chip, I was like, what are we going to do the day that there's no longer, I'm never going to eat eggs again? <laughs> That's what we say about restaurants. It's like, oh, I don't know if the restaurant's going to make it. I'm like, let's go every day. And tell let's everyone. Tell everybody. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Kat, what do you, I mean, I know the list is long, but pick, the list is pick long. a couple key items. Um, I know you don't even like, Kat's like, I can't be seen in a grocery store. Like, I'm not yeah, going to. Yeah, we send, yeah. like, Jerome in disguise. Yeah, right. She comes to my house and there's, like, produce in a, in a plastic bag. Like, I have kids. I have to, like, buy bananas, yeah. you know? They, I can't get into the market. She gives me, like, such a shaming eye, like, the dirtiest look. Like, you went to the grocery store. <laughs> you to... bought produce at Trader Joe's? <laughs> when Kat comes over, I just, like, hide all my groceries but That's go right. ahead there we go all right yeah Tell well everybody. for me it's definitely you know produce like mm-hmm. i would just can't even imagine eating a tomato that's been in deep storage and it's been hybridized to be hard which yeah. is the goal of, at grocery stores because of the ship yeah. so a tomato or something like that just seems like a waste but also eggs yeah. i never buy eggs at a grocery store it's the yellow yolks what they're eating the way chickens are treated in corporate yeah. um you know in the factory farming of chickens is really really nasty yeah and and the flavor once you get used to eating chickens that have been eating grass and the fruits that the other farmers throw away that the chicken farmers take back and give to them and things uh it the flavor of those eggs is just completely different mm-hmm. you just inspired us yeah. <laughs> the way that you just described it yeah. especially with the yellow oh my, yeah oh it's not supposed orange, to orange so yeah. beautiful i yeah. every once in a while i'm somewhere not Bridget's house. I'm not going to say it's Bridget's house, but every once in a while I'm somewhere. We get three sons' eggs now. Okay, okay. Good. Nick right, delivers good. them we to my house you. sometimes when I can't oh, yes. come to the market. Yes, that's good. I know, Took converted me with eggs. Okay, thank so long. you. I got like the five dozen at Costco. Like my family eats so mm-hmm. many egg dishes. So, but yeah, I've converted. but they were the, just those pale, anemic yolks. Yeah. It was so sad when you cracked <laughs> one of those. So sad. <laughs> so sad. Yeah. Three Sons, <laughs> Dolly Ranch. Mm-hmm. Dolly yeah. Ranch, so good. Yeah, you really can taste the difference, I feel You like. can. Yeah. My kids appreciate it. One of my kids won't touch any eggs, so it kind of takes down the buzz <laughs> from the eggs. Um, Justine, what do you only get? Okay, lettuce. Yeah. Especially with uh, all the, like, freaky... Yeah, recalls and things. Yeah. Happening. So lettuce for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also berries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Berries. I feel like by the time I get them home for the grocery store, they're like beat up and they just like don't taste that good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're so much better at the farmer's market. And I know that there's also a lot of just like controversy with like different brands that use, you know, not the best labor practices. Right. Because yeah. a lot of berries, berries here in the yeah. grocery stores come from Chile and, and yeah. Argentina. And, and they're, they're a lot of times like sprayed a lot. So yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. berries and lettuce for sure. And they taste market. so good. Oh, I mean, like so everything. Good. But I feel like yeah. if you did a blind Fruit. test, 
if anyone ever argues that like grocery store berries are just as good, you could just do a blind test. And it's <laughs> yeah. like absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. Stone not fruit, true. berries, tomatoes, mm-hmm. any of that fruit is just so different when it's Obviously fresh. Obviously everything. Yeah. And yeah, and I feel like the lettuce, it stays like it stays fresh for so much longer from the farmer's market. Like mm-hmm. if I get a box of lettuce at the grocery store, it's bad like in a couple of days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But at the at the farmer's market I get it from JR and it's like I'll get the lazy man's bag of like already <laughs> torn up and, and mosh I like that <laughs> but it doesn't go bad mm-hmm. very soon you know I can have it for a week and it's still good in there not like it usually lasts that long but um yeah let us definitely all right I'm gonna say all, yes to all those things too and then my main thing that I just don't buy anywhere else now not that I really did because I feel like grocery store cheese selection is not always the best but I can't buy like brie or like Gouda, like the cheeses that are like my staples in my life from anywhere else than the farmer's Ooh, market. And good. I think it just tastes better if like a French man hands it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, he like, yeah, he puts like his Frenchness on it and he says like messy, you know, yeah. like it's just, and then I'm like, this is going to taste this great. Is so much <laughs> this better. is going to be so And I'm eating it with my bread and it's like, yes, this t- I feel French. So thank you, Frank. Your market bread. Yes, my yeah. market bread, my bread and see. Um, baguette and yeah it's so good so the cheese definitely and then because I always have to talk about something sweet every podcast apparently I just don't buy cookies anywhere else like I always get yeah. cookies in the market because I get Maya's cookies and then I get the ugly cookie which is the best it's a vendor shit only makes one kind of cookie it's chocolate chip oatmeal cookie and they're mm-hmm. drop cookies they're yeah kind of like misshapen they are ugly they're super ugly yeah. and but they're so good and I just buy them by the dozen and it's like it's so good and they're so fresh so have you tried the cheesecake in a cup? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like over, like when he started at the market, like whatever, eight years ago, and it was his mom selling it, I ate so much cheesecake. <laughs> oh I kind of like overdosed gosh. on it. Oh I was God. like, it's a, it's little. I'll just snack on it. So I had like six every market. And then it I was like, so I can't eat it. Good. It's so good. good. It's really good. Key lime. It's mm. really good. Oh, and he just sells it too. I mean, it tastes better if a man with a frilly apron hands it to you. I think. And our our <laughs> life. My mama made this cheesecake. Uh, yeah, to, really love Casey. yeah, yeah. to your it. point about the cheese, our life changed. Our lives changed two weeks ago. Or was it last week when we bought? And I was looking at the Instagram handles at Frenchy. The Frenchy Yo- yogurt. Oh, Frenchy oh, yogurt. Yeah. Sheep's milk. Sheep's oh, milk yogurt. Oh, but we got the, the sheep's milk in the, the jar. The cheese and the little yes. balls. Holy oh my goodness. cow. <laughs> we have a chef Can't that comes back. to the Wednesday market who just discovered that. And he co- he came back last time and bought, I think, 12 jars. Oh I'm going to figure out how to deal with Bring this on the menu. Bucket. It's so Pretty good. Incredible. Could not believe yeah. how good that was. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We put it on the CD. We have to go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> So many good things. Got to walk so to the market things. from right. my house in North Park to make that cheese burn off. <laughs> awesome. It's light. It's sheep smoke. It's light. Oh, it's yeah, light. that's right. It's healthy. I feel like anything at the farmer's market is healthy. I'm like, this cookie is healthy because I got it <laughs> at the, the farmer's, farmer's market. market. <laughs> all in balance. Okay. It's all right. She's getting a cup. Yeah. yeah. Farmer's market cheese. As long as you just have one. It's just a cup. Yeah. It's just a cup of cheesecake. There's produce <laughs> everywhere, so it's healthy. That's right. All right. Yeah. Well, this was is great. so fun. Yeah. Thanks. thanks for having us. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, thanks course. so much for coming. In. Have you listened to the podcast? I did. Yeah, I did listen to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Kat said, and I was like, "That's Let's a podcast." They finally said, they finally said <laughs> "It's like radio." Yeah. <laughs>Hey, thanks for listening. Please leave us a review on iTunes and tell us how you liked today's episode. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss the next one. And if you want more farmer's market tips, you can subscribe to our weekly newsletter at IntenseBusiness.com and follow us on Instagram at IntenseBusiness. That's I-N-T-E-N-T-S Business. The 2019 Intense Conference will be held in San Diego February 24th through the 26th. Get your tickets now at intenseconference.com. We hope you'll join us. This podcast is produced by Intense Business, where passion meets profit. Today's episode was recorded and edited by Justine marzoni Mead. Original music by David Mead. Special thanks to our guests Tiffany and Terrence and San Diego Markets.